some changes at Australia Post. We've seen the appointment of a new CEO, but on the same day, the old CEO is preparing to face a Senate inquiry. What sort of an impact could that have? Good morning, Janika. It's a, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a coincidence, a plan, I'm not sure, but when you've got the new CEO <laughs> being appointed the day before, the outgoing CEO, the old CEO now, Christine Holgate, of course, is fronting that Senate inquiry. Uh, it, it makes for some interesting dynamics, doesn't it? Some interesting juxtaposition. It's, look, the, the story really here, of course, is a political one, and then it's a business one. We know that Australia Post is, frankly, facing some challenges. We know the parcel volumes are growing dramatically. The letter volumes are falling dynamically. It's a real issue for, for the company to try and deal with that grapples with a new world. Of course, there's extra grief around who should be leading the business. Was it reasonable that Christian Holgate was forced out by the PM or, or the chair uh, as a result of that Cartier scandal? Of course, I don't think it was, but that's, that's for someone else to decide in the fullness of time. The important thing, of course, for Australia Post is they get on with doing business, make sure we're all served as a community, and most important, they have a fundamentally working business model in a land of online deliveries and where letters really are the thing of yesterday. Yeah, well, they say there's no such thing as coincidences, but uh, in this case, uh, who knows, Scott? Now, the Treasurer says that spending money at home is helping to boost the economy. Yeah, Chair, this has been a, look, uh, we say that Australia is the lucky country and it was supposed to be used ironically and somewhat scathingly by Donald Horne when he coined the phrase, but I'm not sure that over the last 12 months we could have had any more luck. In this case, it turns out that we Australians actually spend more overseas in a year when we travel than our visitors do when they come here. What that's meant, of course, is that's what's underpinned the economic recovery over the past six or nine months, which is the money we would have otherwise taken to the US or Europe or Asia or somewhere else is being spent instead at home, particularly in retail. Now, it doesn't mean, of course, that it's even for everybody, tourism businesses, particularly that cater to incoming tourists, are still really, really struggling. So we shouldn't lose sight of the individual stories, but at a national level, at an aggregate level, the good news is the money we're not spending overseas is actually propping up and even growing the Australian economy compared to what we'd be doing if we spent the money overseas instead. Well, it's interesting because the Deutsche Bank is saying that the budget could be in surplus in as little as four years. Is this an optimistic prediction or in line with expectations, Scott? Uh, Zanegra, I think it's a little bit optimistic, but to be fair, Deutsche Bank has said that that's the case. They're saying it could be back in surplus in a little as four years if circumstances fall the way we hope they might, which would be a stunning recovery, quite frankly, from the deepest, sharpest recession we've had on a quarterly basis in history. Of course, we've only been doing quarterly GDP numbers for the last 60 or 70 years, so it doesn't take the Great Depression into account. But when you think about where we were, and again, it's so hard to um, forget, but equally it's hard to remember sometimes how bad things felt, how scared we were in March, April, May, in June last year, the fact we might yet get the budget back into balance in as little as four years um, it is a remarkable turn of events. Now, it won't pay off that debt. That is still going to be multi-decade debt unless we do something to pay it off more quickly. Uh, but the good news for the, the economy, the good news for the government, the good news for taxpayers is if things keep going as well as they are so far, and that's always a, a big if, but if they do, we could be back in balance by 2025. Yeah, well, there you go. But you're right, 12 months ago, we were all inside and everything was shut. Scott Phillips, thank you for joining me this morning.